Welcome back to another episode of CATV Tech Talk. Today, we have a special guest with us, Chris. Um, we are going to go over some storm recovery. Uh, we have our co-host, Jesse, who's going to be covering the south doing tornado recovery. Um, I am going to cover the northeast doing hurricane recovery. And Chris is going to talk to us about right now the fires going on over on the west coast and what they actually have to do to uh, repair that plant and take care of it. Um, How's everybody doing today? Good. Good, man. Awesome. Um, so Chris, 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 how, how do we know you? Wait, how, how, does, how does that story begin? Oh, man, how long has it been? About five years, right? Yeah, longer, than, it's been longer than that. Yeah, about six, I, seven, something. But no, what was it when we started, or when you guys actually started the CATV group, and then you're looking for someone to join in. Yep. And then kind of make made my way up, and then we ended up all being co-founders. And then, yeah, because you you did come on relative. I want to say it was about. I want to say it was two months after. I think we really got things rolling is when Chris rolled in and gave us a hand with everything. Because like you said, you kind of. I don't want to say you moved up the ranks like a Facebook page is that official and it's, you know, a big deal, but I posted you know, the most. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you were consistent and you, yeah. it was, you put the care and effort into it. It was nice because you, again, you were a tech, so you know how it is. So it was a good place for text to go. So you, you definitely liked being a part of that. So, um, but yeah, you, it, it was, you were a, a big part in the beginning, I think of getting CATV text rolling as well. Uh, he was real anal about it like he was real <laughs> meticulous so like like the rest of us like fuck it we'll do it at this time or this time or this time and he's like real on top of shit i'm like, like even going better through. than oh shit this one's posting with this one. Oh shit take it off move it yeah <laughs> yeah man like i remember that that was cool i was never that bad but i was you know i always wanted it right but that dude he fucking always had it right i remember going through the messages and you could just see um chris hitting up all the guys like hey how come you didn't post anything? You're supposed to post five minutes ago. Is everything I, I, all right? I oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. I remember that. It was like, <laughs> he was like the headmaster. And there was like everybody who was like joined up to like post. And he'd be like, dude, it's like 1132. And you were supposed to fucking post at 1130. What the fuck's going on with you? <laughs> so then he would go and fucking cancel that guy's post for the next three times and fucking put his own in just to guarantee they would fucking get done. <laughs> you had Man, your chance. You screwed back. up. Yeah, you're, you're done, bitch. It's over. <laughs> God, real freaking cutthroat for something that uh, something that's supposed to be fun. Hey, we had to hit our audience, right? <laughs> yeah. Hey, man, I mean, we put effort into it. That's for sure. Well, Chris, Chris, tell everybody. Uh, we've told everybody in the last couple of weeks about us. Uh, tell tell the audience about you, where you're from, what you do. Well, I'm up in Oregon, um, system tech. But man, I've moved around so much. I've been doing this almost 20, 20 years now. Uh, I've been dealing with customers about 18 years of being field tech. And then, you know, I was in California for a bit and I was doing literally from the house all the way back to the head end. It was one tech did everything and moved up to Oregon, came to work for this cable company up here. Um, out in central Oregon and yeah, it's, it's been great, but yeah, it took the step. I tried the whole supervisor thing, ended up moving my whole family, uprooting them over to Colorado. No offense to Colorado. It's great and all, but yeah, my other family did not like it. And yeah, we, we ended up moving back to, back to Oregon. Yeah. This is home and this is where we like to be. So. Yeah. <laughs> You know, we we love Colorado and stuff, but we like the small town feel. And you know, we were in Fort Collins, and it was more college feel. You know, back to sales tax and all this other stuff. It was just too pricey for us. So, mainly why we ended up going back. But you know, I had to stick it out there. You know, family went back to Oregon. I had to stick it out there until that minimum time that I can re-transfer back. But transferred back over to maintenance, and you know, hey, I'm loving it. I do. Do corp I do corporate cameras now and and so forth side gigs. 
I can't imagine you were talking about California, a job where you work from the CPE all the way back to the head end. That would be the biggest pain in the ass in the world. Oh, it was. One tech did it all. And how many jobs yeah. a day would you have to go through doing that? Well, I mean, you got your simple trouble calls, but then if you notice uh, that there's a plant issue, then you're tracking it all the way back and so forth. Heck, back then, we were all paper. It was no electronic tech wow. net or anything like that. Then, even coming up here to Oregon, we when we first got in here, it was all paper. Here's your work orders for the day. You're going off and doing them. Then they slowly started integrating electronic and so forth. But, I mean, heck, being a standard field tech doing repairs, we average 20 to almost 30 calls a day. Wow. Oh, my God. And are they, what were your, were you eight-hour or 10-hour day? Well, I would assume 10-hour days trying to pay in that many jobs no, a day. Eight, eight, eight hours if you can get them done. I mean, there's some times where you're working until almost 11 o'clock or midnight if the customer wants you still out there. Wow. But that's you're not salary, you're hourly. So, hey, enjoy that yeah, big money. True. <laughs> <laughs> which is actually a great segue into what we're talking about today uh which is a storm recovery if you want overtime i think all of us know as techs that's where you make your overtime um real quick though back to the north colorado because again i know every technician listening to this first question is going to be do they piss test you no <laughs> all right there you are ladies and gentlemen the only if time right, that you get North colorado i'll tell you right now the only time that you'll really get piss test or anything like that is if you get in an accident that's what wow. any job really i mean you get in a car accident or you get some type of injury or whatnot you're gonna get piss test i mean that's regardless of the fact fun fact for you though if you are employed in the state of maine the employer cannot give you a drug test no matter what rear-ended accident you cannot give the employee a drug test. So any technician that's up in Maine is free and clear of that. They'll just find your hat and take a hair sample. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, without well, you know. But anyways, all right. I'll sh I'll sh I just had to get that question out there. But all right. So back to the storm recovery. Like we said, great money maker. Um, all three of us being from different parts of the United States, me being Northeast. Jesse, you being down in the South and Chris, you over in the Northwest. Um, which means we all deal with different type of storm recoveries. Um, I mostly see hurricanes up where I am. Uh, occasional, we'll get the um, the storm bursts. Or what are they called? Micro bursts. Every once in a while, we'll get a micro burst, which will screw up things pretty good. But I mean, that's that's really it. Besides snow. Um, so I mean, as far as Jesse, is it just tornadoes down there that you deal with? The storms in general, but yeah, we, I can only, looking back on it, man, we, we had a tornado in 2011 when I was a service tech at Comcast. Um, that was mainly my only experience with like, ba like bad, bad storm damage. Like, you know, we've always had outages and shit you deal with, lightning strikes and stuff, but the, the route this thing took was kind of crazy. Um, where I live at, I'm on the north side of the state of Georgia. So there's like a mountain mountain line that runs from one county to the next, right? Like you could go over a mountain from one county to the next. Mm. Well, that tornado went from one side to the other straight over that mountain. And there's still a spot today, that was nine years ago, that you can see where that tornado went over, where it tore everything down. It's still almost bare really? in that one spot where it went up over that mountain. You can still see it. Um, when I worked at Comcast, we had one side of the system that was ours that we had to repair, and then the other side belonged to Charter. Well, I remember when this happened, the night, the night of, this is, the, this is great. You're going to love this. I had just went through a separation from my kid's mother, and she had taken my boys, and we were going through that. And I had come home, and it was, it was kind of getting kind of dark outside, and it was raining and shit. And uh, – I started drinking. Anybody else? Yeah, I think every tech has been fucked up at some point, so we can talk about this. I was drunk as hell, and I was, like, cussing at the storm, and the damn trees are blowing sideways. And my neighbor walks out. He's like, man, you better get in the house, dude. It's going to get bad. I didn't think nothing of it. Well, eventually I passed out, got up, go to work. Next morning I go in. We're in the office. You know, back then it was like, uh, you know, paperwork orders like he was talking about earlier, and, you know. So we all had to, before we did like the home garage thing, we all had to meet in the morning and get our vans and shit. Well, I, I went in the office and 
a buddy of mine, his name was David. He said that he had, a, he was older than me. He had a grown son or his son's like 17 at the time, 18, but he worked at the food line down in the area, the one area that we had that got tore up. And he said that night a car got thrown. He was at the register, like checking people out and a car got thrown through that big plate glass window, you know, that grocery stores have. Yep. Like as this was going on, as they were trying to run to the back, like a car got thrown through that plate glass window. Like that exit was cut off, was shut up, shut down off the interstate for like three months after that. Jesus. I remember getting, uh, they started like, they didn't really care as much about metrics at that point because there was so much to do. So like they gave us, uh, I was, like I said, a service tech then, but I would go out, they would pair us with a system tech. And I learned a lot about the system whenever that happened because I got the – and you remember if you, what I told you before that I did plant construction right out of high school. Yep. And then so after I, that, I knew, you I knew the technician. Right. So I, I knew, like, some basic basic stuff. And, you know, I could put connectors and shit like that on. But I learned more about it than I would have otherwise. But, like, the sad thing about it was, like, I remember this one subdivision we went in. I had 46 drop downs all on me. 46 drop downs but it's me and a system tech so if we had to run 46 drops we could do it pretty quick you know what did I mean? you did you call them drop downs that that's what it was said on a drop all down. right so i think we need to have a another segment in the show where it's freaking northern versus southern words because i call it a down drop that's the way well, i call on, it on my work order it would say drop down so it's straight from the source. It's the education you guys are getting. It's not your fault is what you're telling me. So oh, okay. okay. All right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, well, that explains why your pants are constantly down. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. All right. Well, uh, good to know. Clarify. Drop downs. Down drops. I hope it's that easy the entire time. I just have to reverse everything I don't understand, and it will just make sense. That would be fucking awesome. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> all right <on> sorry <laughs> go ahead i apologize continue no no you're good i, I, I had a, i had 46 downed drops <laughs> <laughs> he, he struggled while saying that one <laughs> hey but we don't have to pause and ask questions <laughs> well I, I had to pause just to get that shit out man um uh, anyway uh, i was me and the system tech and we started driving through the subdivision and i don't think we ran one and just about every house was a big pile of rubble. There was nobody there. The poles were on a, in an easement, like right behind the the houses, and every one of them was on the ground. Um, there was one house that was still up that the people were there. They had and they didn't have any power, but they still had a, the cable drop was on the floor on the ground. I hooked it back to the tap. I mean, what do you expect? What there ain't nothing we could do. We're waiting on the power company at this point. What Jesse isn't telling us is that tap was on the ground. But keep going. It, it was absolutely on the ground. It, um, that's the funny. Yeah, part I, I just you get people that call in and say, oh, "I got no internet, dude. You have no fucking power." I mean, like <laughs> some of these people apparently didn't have a side of their house. <laughs> God. Yeah, no, no, there it was bad, man. Out of out of those, I coded most all of them, no access or whatever, because there was nothing you could do. And it was no just access a, to a freaking roof to put a hook into. There was nothing there, man. It was just, it was really sad. Yeah. And we worked for about three or four months straight, like seven days a week, and we were doing plant rebuilds, and it was just, it was, it was rough, man. It was a rough time. And you're talking about overtime, dude. I burned it up. I made a lot of money during that time. But it, it makes you feel bad you make that kind of money during that time because you're doing that the at the money. expense of people that, like, lost everything. Yeah, and that's the sad part. And that's the hard part of doing the storm recovery is, you know, you're you're not trying to fix just, you know, well, you are. You're, you're going out there to fix plant and to rehang drops, but you're also – you know kind of getting a little piece of everybody's life and what they're going through specifically during that time because i'm I mean, sure can you imagine can you imagine like something completely out of your control not, it, basically a natural disaster yeah. you have nowhere to live you you don't have a car because there was cars on the side of the road and shit that were like flipped over sideways you don't have anything i, and the, I mean the majority of America runs paycheck to paycheck, right? Amen. So you think of these people that just lost everything they have. Most of them can't go and like 
rent something tomorrow to have somewhere to live. It was a sad situation. Well, yeah. most, a lot of people too, don't carry spare cash, like in their pocket to run out with. So yeah. it's all credit cards and everything else. Well, if everything's shut down, how are you basically paying for anything? You can't. Yeah. Yeah, it was, and, and, like, businesses that down that way, like, everything, like, there was no power down there for, like, almost two weeks, two or three weeks, there was no power. It was, uh, it was really bad. That was probably the worst that I ever dealt with, personally. Um, I never, you know, when I worked uh, building fiber back in the day, I, I went on one trip with those guys to Kentucky. I, I just think they had really bad storms, but they, uh, we, we built some new strand and hard line up there. But it wasn't nothing compared to what what I seen back in 2011. That was that was really sad. It's like go to any go to anywhere near you guys and just drive around a subdivision and picture every house, but like three, like just a pile of rubble, like everything's on the ground. It, it was sad, man. Yeah, I got hurricanes, and a hurricane might drop a tree and take out a line, but a tornado goes through. It's it's not a one out of ten chance something's gonna hit you. It's you're getting hit. Absolutely. It, it was, it was a rough situation. It was hard to, it was hard to look at, you know, knowing that people's got kids and families and things. It was just, and the worst thing that I seen while I was there, and this kind of hit me hard. I'm not a big animal activist, but you know, I got a dog, you know, or whatever. Uh, when I was out there, I seen three dogs that were just dead on the ground where I guess they, they couldn't get them like in the house quick enough or out in the car to get away or whatever they were trying to do. And it was, it was, that was kind of heartbreaking too, you know? Yeah. Jesus, I couldn't even imagine. I I dealt with storms, but I I never had to deal with deal with that at least. Yeah, and like on my side, it wasn't terrible. I just worked a lot, but I I kind of had more compassion for the people having to go through it. Yeah, yeah, and it's you know I sit here and joke and say, oh well, there's no roof to put a you know a pee hook on, but you're right. It's it's really not funny. It, it's it's sad. It's it makes you want to do more than your own PTSD off of that. Yeah. yeah, Yep. You know, it, it makes you want to do more than just hit rehang that drop, but unfortunately not, you can't always. So tell us about you, Drew. What's it like up North East? Cold, 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 cold. No. Um, we get the Nor'easters every once in a while. Um, you know, so we deal with the snow, Hurricanes probably our most damaging thing, um, or the microbursts. I have not seen a ton of microbursts, really. Actually, what are, what are you referring to as a microburst? What are you calling that? What is that? So it's high wind, um, high rain, or heavy rain, high wind. Um, it's pretty much hur- hurricane-like conditions, but it appears and disappears within fifteen to twenty seconds. But the damage it does, it's it's like a mini tornado. I don't see, and that's the thing is they only come so quick, so not many people see them. But I've seen them come, or I, I haven't seen them come through, but, you know, I've been part of those heavy storms where they, you know, where it kicks in hard like that, and it it's pretty powerful. So we've gone to houses where um, microbursts, like remember Concord, Massachusetts, um, they got hit with the microburst down there to the point where the parts of the house were actually actually ripped off which is not very common up this way uh you know if something's getting ripped off the house it's because the j-hook held on to that sideboard and took it with it when the limb took the drop off the side of the house that's that's the only time you ever really see that so um so the microburst they they do pretty good damage but they don't cover a huge area um like i said we mostly have to deal with the hurricanes if anything um you get your high winds the high winds come in, they hit all your trees and they, they break all your branches and they take down all your drops. So for us, it's, it's mostly just drop recovery. Um, I was a field technician, so that's primarily what I did. Uh, I never so much had to deal with the plant side of it. I, I watched them do it and, you know, they, they pulled those, which Chris, I'm or both of you, because you're both maintenance or you both did, or Jesse did it at one point and Chris, you do it now, but uh, it's, countless hours sitting there trying to fix those strands and put those poles back up because i can put up drops all day but unless that plant's there for me to put it onto i'm gonna be like jesse screwing the drop into the tap on the ground um well even with my topic i need to deal with them know your guys regardless i mean you look at even fiber optics really depends on where your uh, central office is 
And yep. if it's going that direction, it wipes out a fiber. You can be knocking down three or four towns down the road that never got affected by the storm. But yeah. they're, they're all posting and stuff. I mean, you're dealing with a lot of people on Facebook and stuff. You know, this company sucks, blah, blah, blah. They're down. You know, when are they going to get fixed? And it's the communication that they also need. And, you know, I find myself at times, too, posting like, hey, you know what, we're on site, we're working on it, this is the holdup, and I know a lot of people appreciate that, but it's still, yeah. you know, there's nothing you can physically do until emergency services get there, and once they get there, they have to assess, they have to do what they need to do, and then they release it for anybody to go out and actually do that stuff. Yeah, to fix it, yep. yeah. Man, nope, nope, I just got rain and wind. <laughs> <laughs> that's it um it but flood, no, does it flood bad up north i have not seen a lot of flooding uh there are parts it's more of like a oh, it's a big puddle i don't want to get my boots wet so let's not go over there um but not too much flooding the most flood damage i've ever seen um i ended up going out to new york in 2000 it was Hurricane Sandy. So whenever Hurricane Sandy was, I can't not remember the date for the life of me. I want to say it was like 2013, 14. Um, but Long Island got hammered. So Comcast went down to Long Island to help Spectrum. So I was one of the techs that ended up going down there. I went down there for about two weeks. That was the most damage I have ever seen as a cable technician. Um, I don't want to say completely comparable to you, Jesse, but um, on Long Island, there's actually a, a little island that comes off of it called Long Beach. And it got, I believe it's Long Beach. Nobody hold me to that. I'm 90% sure it's Long Beach. But they were kind of the, they were the ones who took the brunt of it because the ocean came in and hit them first. Um, I have videos of just driving down the main stretch on the beach you know beach or ocean to the left of me you know and inland to the right and people just have everything that was in their home stacked on the sidewalk waiting for these trucks to come by with these cranes to pick up all the debris and all the stuff because i mean these houses would get flooded and they'd be destroyed so all these people's things they'd, they'd be useless well, and you gotta try to dry it out everything. yeah okay. yep mold and this was this was right before winter, I believe. So, you know, you're starting to get into that cold season. So it's kind of a hurry up and go situation. You don't want your, you know, your carpet freezing. Um, but unfortunately the people on, um, on that part, they, they weren't even staying in their houses. I, I wish I actually know how long it took to occupy that area again. Cause it was pretty bad. I saw jet skis that were two miles inland. Um, they, I have a picture of somebody who had a freezer outside and they wrote on the front of it, please don't loot my house. I need the insurance company to come out first and be able to see the damage. Um, so people were taking advantage of the situation, looting. Uh, gas was a rare thing for those first few weeks after Hurricane Sandy hit them. I remember seeing lines two, three miles long, uh, seeing people pull into those lines and sometimes going by the next day and still seeing that same person in line, but now they're pushing their car because they ran out of gas waiting in line. We were very fortunate. The, uh, again, we were down there for spectrum and they actually had a gas pump right on site that we could use. So we didn't have a problem getting gas, but, um, long Island did for sure. They, they, any gas truck that came into long Island was escorted by two state troopers, one in the front, one in the back. Um, uh, that's that's probably the worst damage I've ever seen. That that one was tough. Like you said, Jesse, it's hard walk or driving around and just staring at all these people who just lost everything. And you know, you got some guy inland five miles that a drop took out. Or, I mean, a tree took out his drop, and he's complaining, oh, "I can't watch the game. I missed the game yesterday." But then you have these guys or these families that are you know <laughs> right there on the ocean. And they have nothing now because of yeah, something fuck, that we fuck have zero control that. over. <laughs> fuck those people, man, that bitch over. Well, this happened yesterday and I missed this, this, and this. Man, life's too short to worry about shit like that. But the sad part man, is they, you have people that think they're better than everybody else. It's like, but you're not. You you have a, 
a house just like everybody else does. You're not any higher priority than your neighbor. No, I, I hated that, but yeah, man, I'm to the to people losing losing their possessions and things. You know, people spend their whole life like I've started over multiple times, but people most people spend most of their life like trying to buy their their home or you know a car or whatever they're trying to obtain things. You know, like people do, right? And when something like that comes through and just takes it all away, not only on a personal level is that terrible for the person, but like it emotionally just drains them and it's hard to recover from that. So, you know, like the little bit that we can do to, even if it's nothing else, when they, they rebuild, if we just do a good job, you know, getting them back on or whatever it may be, you know, that, that or, you know, like I think Comcast and Charter both did it for a while where they would give cable for new builds. Like, I'm pretty sure when that happened down here, they, like, donated a shit ton of, like, coax to different places that were doing rebuilds, so nobody had to pay for it. So, like, it, just even in a little little sense that we can do something to try to give back, man, that's a good thing, because that, that's, a, that's a terrible situation for anybody. Yeah. Yeah. Now, I mean, I have to say, I it's very rare you saw a hurricane um, – at least again up in the northeast um it's very rare that you would find a hurricane that it would put somebody out of their house i actually had one of the one it was a regular actually i think it was more of a nor'easter that we had and it took down a branch and it went <laughs> it was a week before christmas and uh the branch went right through the guy's roof into his living room through his living room floor and pegged out in the basement you walked in his living room he had a Christmas tree coming out of the floor. I thought it was fantastic. He made the smart ass comment. Hey man, at least you don't have to go out and buy a tree now. He didn't appreciate it very much. Understandable. But, um, you know, I, I, again, it's try to bring humor into a bad situation. Yeah. You know, I'm very much so that person. Oh my God. <laughs> but, but yeah. So I mean, fire fires right there with tornadoes. I mean, except, there's probably well, not as much cleanup because everything's burnt. Storms in general. I mean, fire can be brought on even by lightning. Yeah. Uh, I, yeah. Very true. I live out in a dense area that there's a lot of trees and forests. So it just takes, that's it. One lightning hit. Good. Boom. Starts a fire, even on a house. God. Now how, I mean, actually it seems every year now there's just continuous fires out there on the West coast. Oh yeah. I mean, you Everybody has probably seen a huge shortage on telephone poles and stuff, even in their companies. Like, hey, you know, we need to get this pole replaced. Sorry, you know, there's a backlog of months until we can get it. Uh, that's because of all the fires burning down everything out in California and uh, in Oregon and so forth. It's it's devastating. Yeah. It's, now, with all these fires reoccurring. Uh, actually i can't even say every year continuously constantly are you guys taking any measurements to try to help prevent future damage because it seems like it's something that's not stopping fires just are continuing it's something that's again mother nature what we're talking about it's completely out of our control are they trying to do anything to help limit that damage i mean you got to think comp big bigger company wise i mean not us i mean we can't speak we don't own the companies or whatnot but i mean Potentially sticking things underground would be ideal because then it won't get damaged. But you look at cost of you know digging and so forth. I mean that can get up into the thousands, if not hundreds of thousands, compared to just getting material and hanging up onto a, a telephone pole that's already there or power pole. Now, have you? So you said underground would be ideal. Is there any repercussion with fire having an underground system? Is it completely safe? I mean, when they're digging down at least six feet down into the ground, I mean, I would say it's safe. I mean, unless you get a dozer that comes through and trying to push dirt that rips it up. But other yeah, than see, that, I don't even think of that. Just the dozers trying to, that's right, build that dirt line so the fire don't travel yep. beyond it. And wow. Is out west like progressively dry? Yeah, where, like, where we don't. You guys are. We're up in the high desert. We don't really get a lot of rain until the October time. Then we get rain, then we get snow, and then and then that's it. And then it goes back to, okay, you got dry heat, things like that. Um, you look on the coast, and the coast is always going to be cooler 
but they're going to get more of the rain because they're right by the ocean. So it, so for the most part, you're in a situation to where three months out of the year, it stays kind of moist in that area. And then the rest of the year, it's really dry. So that should lead to a high number of those, those natural fires, right? Well, yeah. And you got a lot of areas, even in California that have, that are in drought. I mean, that, their fields and stuff they can't keep moist so it all dries up and it just takes one person driving down the road with a chain sparking down below to all of a sudden ignite their whole entire field and just take it up yeah i wonder if anybody That's else crazy. got shivers down their spine when you said moist it's just one of those words <laughs> <laughs> i thought i thought about that too <laughs> uh yeah i'm down dribbles <laughs> <laughs> oh god wow yeah so i couldn't even imagine having a constantly constantly just fight that because like you said so all these areas actually have to be cleared before they allow anybody in there to even assess it i would assume well yeah especially i mean if there's any like we just had a fire that happened over by a um, junkyard that ignited and it started taking up and heading over towards the trailer parks. And from what we heard on the radio, on the police scanners and stuff, that there were casualties. Well, that right there stops us from going in. Like, we're ready to go. We're getting ready to go in there, but we can't. I mean, we ended up not going. Fire started at, like, 3 in the afternoon that day. We didn't get access until probably 5.30 in the morning the next day because wow. you got – and when driving through there, it literally looked like the, um, uh, Armageddon happened. You had little spot yeah. fires here and there. Everything was torched and gone. And it was creepy looking. Yeah, I couldn't even – I don't know if I'd want to get out of my truck. <laughs> well, <laughs> and mean, that's just us that, That's just us going to assess our amount of damage. I mean, that's not including power now coming in. Hey, we got to rip out these poles. You can't attach to them, things like that. So we're trying – Everybody has to coordinate together to try to not be in each other's way. But on the other hand, too, we're trying to get people back up. We're trying to get towns that are offline that weren't even affected by it back online because, unfortunately, that's where either the fiber runs or the coax run. And it just gets melted and, and just destroyed. Now, how long does it – I mean, I'm sure it takes a long – how long does it take to rebuild an area like that to – Get it it doesn't take that long. I mean, you end up just pulling, you walk out there, you go get the fiber, you walk it out. Um, by the time you're hanging it up, I mean, you have extra storage on both sides. The fiber crew can be starting down there, starting there while you're hanging it up or even temporarily hanging up out of the way. So it takes a lot of coordination with them on their side, trying to splice everything through and then getting maintenance out there to hang and, and move things out of the way so power can get in or even CenturyLink can get in and do the, all their stuff. Man. I mean, heck, I think that went around or right along the railroad too. So even the railroad was out there. I, I think this would be the only time I'd ever want to be a satellite technician. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to stick it here up on the roof. I'm good. <laughs> Thanks. There's too much smoke in the sky. I lost my reception. <laughs> Again, I shouldn't laugh because it is it is terrible and it is sad. But yeah, that, see, now I want to know if that's a factor. Like, is that something we have to ask our disc technicians when you go out west? Like, hey, man, am I going to get service if this fire? Like, is this going to make it through the smoke? Or Oh, look at what's coming out, too. You got an Elon Musk that's putting out those low-orbit satellites. I mean, that, there's the same people out in the middle of nowhere that's getting high speed, 100 megs down out in the middle of nowhere. God. I find – I just – I have spectrum where I live, and I live up in Maine on a mountain. So – Needless to say, I can't really have super high expectations. Um, but when we moved in, it was 100 meg max. And they just, I don't know if they crushed Quam on their system or I don't know how they managed to do it because they sure did not replace the plant. Um, they got me up to about 400 megs. So not quite the gig I had with Comcast when I was down in Massachusetts. They miss that very much, but um, 400 is better than 
100 so i guess i really can't complain and i have had satellite internet and when i had it it was probably 13 years ago and i could maybe maybe get like three and a half for a download and 0.25 for an upload and if it was spitting rain yep you lost internet that's it you were done worse than dial up (laughs) yeah dial dial up would have been fantastic but (laughs) i was nowhere near a phone line (laughs) <laughs> it's funny you talked about that satellite internet we go fishing up in a place called teleco every year and it's literally the place that time forgot i guess you could say <laughs> at, the, at the bottom of the mountain the comcast is in that area and at the bottom of the mountain it like dead ends right where the it starts going upwards right so like as soon as you get from flat road to where you start going uphill it's done like there's a terminate and tap like two poles up and that's it. Well, you get you drive like 26 miles up this mountain to get to great what they call Green Cove. It's like a, it's got some like hotel cabin things up there where you can stay and fish and shit. And the only people that have internet up there is the store. There's a little store up there. And before I tell you about the internet, I'll tell you this: that store has the greatest fucking money racket in history. They go down the mountain and buy shit, knowing that nobody wants to drive 28 miles back down, and they jack the shit like 40 times what it's worth. I'm pretty sure that Bryson paid like nine dollars for a little little thing of uh, Mayfield ice cream one time. It was like one of those little pints. I was like, "You paid nine dollars for that?" And I was about to run out of cigarettes, and I went in there and I had to bite the bullet. I paid like nine bucks for a pack of cigarettes. Now I know for you guys up north it's like fourteen dollars, but down here my pack of smokes is like five dollars and sixty cents. So nine dollars to me is like what the fuck. Yeah, but anyway, the. I, the only thing they had up there was that that dish or direct tv whatever it is that internet that satellite and internet huge net and huge net, huge net. Think... that's what it is huge net yeah and i went to buy I, I ran out of cash so i had my debit card and i went to buy something up there i think i was paying for my, my net. we were going to stay another day and i had to get another day's fishing stamp or whatever and i stuck it in there and i swear i stood there and that thing was calculating for like 30 minutes <laughs> I'm like, dude. Just is it? Yeah, I was like, what, like, what are we many, doing here, man? How many times are you charging me? <laughs> I, I, they, she had me restart it like five times. <laughs> I'm like, how the hell do they make they make this work? Well, that's what I was gonna ask because I don't know if you guys have this problem, but those stupid chips never work for me. So you gotta put it in, wait for it to fail, take it out, put it in, wait for it to fail, and for us, it's usually three times and then you're allowed to swipe it. So I couldn't imagine having to put it in there, waiting 20 minutes, taking it out, having to put it back in there, waiting well, 20 I got, minutes. I got to know that woman's whole life story by the end of it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. See, my I, God, I was married in 1973, and we had 19 kids and eight grandkids, and then I married my cousin's best friend's former roommate, and we broke up, and blah, 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 blah. Yeah, all that shit. Well, it looks like it failed again. It looks like you got time for another story. Yeah. <laughs> I, I would have asked if the modem was a wedding present. <laughs> God, man, it was it was bad, dude. I, I remember that. It was bad. Wow. So we had our episode. We, uh, we talked about, you know, all these different uh, – situations with all these natural disasters so at the end of our show we have our guest chris and we are going to ask him 10 questions chris are you ready for this you're going to be our first guest that has to answer these questions drum roll please (laughs) i don't know our budget can't afford that yet so no sorry unfortunately Uh, we can't throw that in there but we'll start with the first question all right all right so we're going to call this our catv tech talk question really is that what we came up with that's that's all we (laughs) all right first question chris what is your favorite drop cable to run rg6 or rg11 well i'd rather have hardline but (laughs) that's not a question (laughs) so you know i i like rg11 you know i don't mind you know, a lot of people going from big sections to big sections on the poles. I don't mind grabbing a rope block or come along and tightening it up. You know, it's always fun trying to run across the street while cars are coming across. Yeah, <laughs> I but... think we've all done that. <laughs> number two. Wait. Yes, number two. Coke 
or Pepsi? I'm a Pepsi oh, guy. God. Weirdo. Damn, uh, that's awful. Well, it, no, because, hey, when I used to smoke cigarettes all the time and stuff, when I had a Coke, it fucking tastes like dirt. Like, literally, it will taste like I grabbed a handful of freaking dirt and shoved it in my mouth. I didn't like that taste, so that's why I kind of went towards the Pepsi side because at least smoked a cigarette, it still tasted like Pepsi. <laughs> like Pepsi, not like dirt. All right. <laughs> like Pepsi. Now, I don't mind going out and getting a, a, a Coke or whatnot. It's not like I have to have a Pepsi. I find either one, but, you know, I prefer Pepsi. <laughs> Uh, I'm gonna enjoy this. I, I love this answers, man. <laughs> These are great. All Ooh. right, number three. What is the one tool that you could not go without having as a cable technician? My Leatherman. Your Leatherman. I actually, I have to probably say I agree on that. My Leatherman was my best friend. Yep. My Leatherman. I, I literally do everything. If I don't have it, I'm I'm screwed for the day. Even though I have all the tools on my <laughs> truck, I feel naked. I feel like, oh shit, where did it go? Like, and and you can't do what you normally do. And it's like, it's not the preferred tool, but it gets you through things. I just could never handle the panic of not reaching for it and not feeling it in the pouch and going oh yep. shit what meter did i leave that on <laughs> you know or what basement oh god well and i know a lot of people have their preference on weathermans and stuff i mean i have the the wave i like everything yep. that does this does that's the one i have I, I don't i don't like the big bulky ones i don't like the small tiny ones i like this yeah. you know, heck lifetime warranty can't beat that yeah, my wife's the same way so i get it um <laughs> uh, all right. <laughs> Question number four. These are all fucked up. Question number four. And just so you know, me and Jesse came up with these questions every other. <laughs> <laughs> really? I can't tell. <laughs> <laughs> hamburger or pizza? <laughs> well, I would prefer hamburger over pizza any day. All right, Chris. Question number five. All right, Chris. Question number Come five. On, spit it out. And I feel like this one is going to be kind of an easy answer, but I could be surprised. Bucket truck, ladder, or gaffing? Which one do you prefer? Well, considering I'm in a bucket truck, I, I really enjoy my bucket truck. But you know what? Like majority of a lot of cable techs, you have your backyard easement poles yep. where you can't get in. No way in hell. I do not have a ladder on my truck. I do not. I hate ladders. You know, I know how to carry them but they're such a pain in the ass i would rather gaff I, so. I went through man the the stage of gaffing right out of class because i was in construction first but after about two years and my knees started to hurt i was the biggest ladder baby as a service tech <laughs> when you don't do it in a long time you know gaffing is no problem i never had a bucket truck as a cable technician um now the the job i do now um i get a bucket truck <laughs> so i have to say if i was going to choose bucket truck all day long i nothing beats the bucket truck. you want worse than a bucket truck do you get a bucket van <laughs> no actually those, our those our things bucket, will tip man they'll, yeah. they'll tip like real easy we have yeah, you got no storage either you open that slider and you got your pto right there what the hell yeah <laughs> We actually have a old retired um, Comcast V10 Ford bucket truck with utility body on it. And uh, thing's a gas hog. Have your out, but, do you have outriggers? Uh, it does not have outriggers on it, actually. Um, but, I mean, again, it's, it's so nice to be able to just jump in a bucket and freaking – even when you forget something, because, unfortunately, I'm definitely one of those people where – I did a lot of climbing up and down ladders because I'd get all the way up there and be like, ah, oh, shit, I forgot my, you know, compression tool. Go down there. Well, it's nice because even when you're boomed out like this, you could just go straight down and just hop out. Yep, right down. I mean, you don't ground. have to up, hang on, dock it, and then, uh, yeah, you don't have to deal with that. <laughs> yeah, I hate to sound like a woman for a minute, but it doesn't make me feel great about my weight when I put it on the ground, jump out, and it fucking spikes up three feet in the air. 
<laughs> <laughs> but you get like in uh, Drew or my area, and you want that heater in there. Oh, it's funny. We have a heater in ours too. I we have not run the truck in the winter yet, or we have not had a winter with the truck. Um, but there is a heater in there. I kind of laughed when I saw it. I never knew they existed, uh, but I could imagine it would be useful. Um, all right, next question. Question number six, football or baseball? Baseball. Baseball. What? What? It's got to it, be honestly, a West Coast thing, man. Not, you know, I you hardly am this. really into sports. I'm, I'm not really the sports type of person, but if I have to sit down and, and – well, not have to. If I want to sit down or even go to a baseball game, you know, I'd rather go to a baseball game. I'm not – I, I usually just work, go home, be with the family. It's I live in the Bible See, Belt, man. Football is like the way of life down here. <laughs> yeah, I got my fucking hockey guys. I'm good. <laughs> yeah, guys. <laughs> uh, all right, Chris. Question number seven. On a scale of one to ten, how clean do you keep your truck? Well, I know it said van, but – you know, back when I had a van, yeah, I like to keep it organized so I know where my stuff was. But on my truck, you know, I, with how busy you get, regardless on outages or, you know, even doing pole transfers or whatnot, your truck gets dirty. I mean, back of the bin gets dirty, your your side bins get dirty. I'd say I clean it once every two weeks. Yeah, I mean, just get all the shit out of it and stuff. Um, number eight, rock or wrap? rock um now when you well actually you know what i want to i'm gonna ask both what is your least favorite metric as a technician and as a plant technician okay so as a plant technician we don't really have met, met uh metrics. Ooh, a lot of we're, people are gonna be uh, a little jealous here in that well i mean we're kind of kept alone you know do your thing do what you need to do it's the sad part is, though, and this does hurt because we don't really have metrics that are that they score us on. It's because end of the year review, you know, every year as a tech, I was getting exceptional constantly, right above on the top every single time. Get over to maintenance, and it's, eh, you're in the middle. Yeah. And it's like, it, it, it's really hard for them to track, like, what do you do, things like that, because you could get an outage. All of a sudden, your FSA doesn't give you a ticket. Well, you still got that outage to go do. So, even though you close it or you clear the outage, nobody puts something on you. They can't track that you were at it. So I actually um, have to point this out. This is probably actually, you're probably the first person that ever really gave me that perspective. Now that I can think of it, I've never really looked at it as a downside of not having that metric. Cause like you said, there's no way for them to really gauge what you're doing. So come review time, you know, like they're not on top of you. They're not following you around. Nope, they're not it's watching. It's only you. the negatives. It's only the negatives. Cause you, I, you don't get, you don't get QC. I, I mean, that's the thing you go, you're told to do this, you do it and you don't get QC. It's like uh, when I was doing that job, it's like, it was only what was bad that they could bring up to you. Like, uh, you know, there wasn't any of these customers calling in cause you don't see them. So you can't get like a good review from a customer or anything like that. It's like, Okay, you took too long to to close to to get the, everything back on in this note on this day, so that's really how those reviews kind of went, at least for me, anyway. Well, yeah, I mean, you can get a ticket assigned to you, and you know, hey, I'm busy today, push it off for tomorrow. I mean, there's not like it is a high priority, but you you base your high priorities throughout the day as being a maintenance tech. You know what's what oversees an actual outage compared to, hey, this area has correctables over here. Well, sorry, this outage oversees the correctables. You know, push that off till tomorrow. I'll get to it later type of thing. See, and I'm still but, baffled listening to all this because I've just – I don't know. I'm, and I can't imagine it was only the Northeast working for Comcast. It was just metric upon metric upon – I mean – I remember when they started making people scan their badges just to make copies. I'm like, am I going to have to scan my badge just to piss in the urinal next? Is this really what we're going towards? Uh, yeah. 
Well, it's Big Brother. Like, wh- oh, where is he going? Yeah. Oh, he entered the door. Oh, oh, he went in the bathroom. Okay, when did that door open? And like, they were doing that to our plant technicians. They were, and I'm sure it's only gotten worse. I mean, I haven't been oh, in the that field. That brings up idle times, too. Are you able to idle? I know the field technicians can't idle. They're really hounded about idling. Maintenance, you're not really, like, yeah. how do they know if you're idling and you could be up in your uh, bucket? I mean, they don't know. Yeah, that's very true. Jesus. See? All these crazy little things you don't think of and everybody's different no matter what system you're in. Um and do we really touch did you do we really touch on what your least favorite metric as a technician was? As a technician, I would say probably the idling was my <laughs> <laughs> least metric, especially when it's a hundred degrees outside and like really I can't have my air conditioner on or it's freezing cold. I can't warm up. Like, <laughs> See, I, and again, <laughs> another struggle I don't understand. I didn't have enough time to hang out in my truck to enjoy it turned on. <laughs> well, it's either doing – remember, we were paper too, so it's yeah, you're doing that's, your paperwork, oh, yeah. things like that. And... Yeah, that's true. That's true. But all right, at the end of a hard working day, what do you like to have at the end of the day? Beer or uh, the hard stuff? Uh Beer. beer i'm a i'm a beer person sweet all right man well chris i want to thank you for coming on our show and being our first guest oh, appreciate you guys having me on awesome uh jesse do you have anything anything else oh man i'm good all right well hey guys thanks for uh checking in on us again again i want to thank chris for joining us uh again he was Great guest going over all the different struggles that we have with storm cleanup and all that good stuff. So don't forget, you can message us, reach out to us, look in the show notes. There'll be a couple of links. Ask us questions, and uh, we'll see you guys next time. Later. Peace. Like what you just heard? Then don't forget to click that subscribe button. Questions for the host or just want to say hello? You can email us at catvtechtalk at gmail.com or find us on Facebook at www.facebook.com forward slash catvtechs. Thanks again for joining us and don't forget, climbing, crawling, drilling, driving is just the beginning.